Now that we've done the data analysis and decided how to represent curly expressions, we're ready to write an interpret function, or interp, I'll call it, which takes a curly expression, e, and returns the value of an expression. The value of every, every curly program right now is just a number. So we're going to be defining interp to take an expression and return a number. Let's turn these example data into examples of interp. So if I interp the curly program that's just 2, I expect to get back the number just 2. But if I interp the expression plus 1, 2, then I expect a 3. If I interp 3 times 4, I expect to get a 12 back. And if I interp 1 added to 3 times 4, to make this a test, then I expect to get back a 13. So now I have covered at least the three cases of my expression grammar, plus one more, my expression data type. Um, now I'm ready to write the template for interp. Because it takes an expression that's a type case exp with a num e case where I've got an n, a plus e case where I've got a left and a right, and I get to work with those parts, whereas in the num case I get to work with the number n. And then mult is going to be similar to plus. This is almost a template um, because it uses type case and it covers the three cases and it looks at what we have available, but whereas n is just a number, there's nothing else to do there. L, L is an expression. What should we do with an expression? We should apply some function that works on expressions, since that has its own data definition. In fact, we already have a function that's going to work on expressions. That is interp. So you're going to see this pattern a lot throughout the course. Whenever we are interping an expression, and it has a sub-expression that's also an interp, then what our template suggests that we probably want to do is just interp that sub-expression as well. It comes straight from the, the design recipe. That is our complete template. Now we're ready to make the examples work, so let's go case by case. If we've got a number, then that is the number we want to return as a result. That one's easy. What if we have a plus expression? Then, uh, in this case, we had a nummy1 and nummy2. We've already interped the nummy1, so that gives us the number 1. And we've interpreted the nummy 2 that gives us the number 2. We're looking for the number 3, which is, of course, just the addition of those two things. And then multiplication is going to be similar. We interpret the two sub-expressions, and so now we can just multiply them together. Okay, and with that, we have a complete function. We can run our tests. Our tests all pass. Uh, notice that we could interp a plus e expression of num e with any of plate's numbers. So I could add one half to three plus four i, and if I do that, we get back a number which is seven halves plus four i. Obviously, we are relying on plate's numbers in arithmetic to implement Curly's numbers of arithmetic. And that would be unsatisfying if our goal was really to talk about how numbers are represented and how you implement these operations on numbers. That's not going to be our goal. Uh, we're going to use plate features for the things that we're less interested in at a given time and concentrate on implementing directly ourselves the things that we are interested in, uh, which for now is going to be what does it mean to interpret an expression and to recur into uh, to interpret the sub-expressions. So we have taken control and made all of that explicit in our interpreter here. As, this, as the course progresses, we will take more and more control over different aspects of this interpreter, and uh, while we also add different features to it.